as you search on through life and destiny hear me ladies and gentlemen culture will try to redefine you the failure of people will try to redefine you the thinking of the time will try to redefine you for instance in our world right now when you see a young man and perhaps pressing honorably to his life and destiny chances are excellent that he will feel like a failure because he does not have a car he does not have maybe some house and so on and so forth and there are many people who are actually doing well but simply because society has given a wrong parameter to measure masculinity a wrong parameter to measure growth a wrong parameter to measure ministry a wrong parameter to measure success the fake life that is eating up the average young man in our society is credited directly to identity crisis hallelujah so even if i'm a dummy once i am in a car and i'm driving it i immediately have a sense of superiority to everybody thinking that is the reason why many young people today have found themselves in all kinds of destructive vices almost every week the law enforcement agents are apprehending someone who is involved in some kind of shady practice some kind of destructive practice and you ask the young man what exactly are you looking for the cliche in our world today is i want to make it who is the i that is the question we want to ask who is the i who wants to make it society has told us that we are failures when certain things does not happen when certain things does not add up are we together and some of you right now in this place you are you literally you would have been better by far if you had that sense of self-security for want of word upon the strength of who god has made you some gentleman looked at you and said you are not a beautiful lady and that destroyed your sense of self-worth and you started acting and doing things even stupid things because you are trying to fit there is a cancer that is eating up young people in our world today is the pressure to belong have you heard such a statement so they create mundane parameters that you must qualify to join certain groups or certain people and they are not all wrong but there are some that are so destructive there are groups and people today that if you are a sound christian and you love the lord living a responsible life as a young man and a young lady those groups will send you away they will say you are too innocent to be part of them they want bad people it's, it's like a credit if you say you are a well-behaved person they say no you are too naive and you are too stupid to work with us we need people who are prone to destruction prone to anger prone to rebellion are we together someone who can beat anyone once you are angry and then they call it all kinds of names and some of us who were once well behaved are now becoming something that we were not designed by god because of the pressure to belong dressing speaking social media there are people who were dressing well until they met certain groups of people and they told them if you keep dressing like this you will not marry now that you have changed what has happened say deception yeah. the basic definition of witchcraft is to cause someone to err using the tool of deception hallelujah how about young men with the value of respect and dignity and honor but then here comes a group of very confused but arrogant people who now begin to put pressure on your identity and they say mr man at the rate at which you are going you will never get established there is a way we do things and after two years of foolish work you find yourself in the prison perhaps for the next 10 years perhaps for the next 15 years and the thing is that when you get into trouble all the people who motivated you into that trouble will not come and own up and say we are here for you hmm. who am i is a question that i had to answer in my life if you know who you are you will reject the pressure from men to become anything god did not say about you hallelujah for instance, I learned from this revelation that having a car and having a house is not what defines me. I'm not saying those things are wrong. But if I suddenly feel good about my life just when I have a car and a house, it's a risk. What then happens when the car spoils? Your value for yourself also drops. So if I stand in the midst of someone who has a better dressing than me, I begin to feel like a failure. By what parameter? Who brought these parameters? It's time for you to begin to probe the things that represent the epicenter of your self-worth. Now, I'm not saying to not be challenged. 
because there are some of us who really need to be challenged if people don't challenge you you will never leave that psychological cocoon that you are in so being challenged is a good thing for many people hallelujah yes there are people today for instance who are not earning up to say hundred thousand a month but every great hotel maybe in this city or restaurant you will find them there you are here again say yes <laughs> who is paying for this no by myself Twenty thousand out of a salary of hundred thousand you didn't tight you didn't give you didn't save you didn't do anything and then while the food is there you now take um, this thing you put take and then you send it and say look maybe God is good or to God be the glory and then the people you hope to see as always you know I'm not being sarcastic I'm probing you what you see today that you call koinonia ladies and gentlemen is not just a journey of faith alone it's a journey of patience life challenge our identity in various ways but thanks be to God for the resilience to remain when you find out what God has said about you it doesn't matter who misunderstands or the, many of us today want great organizations you want to lead ministries you want to lead businesses and someone says stupid and you are crying am i is this how i am you mean this sister just looks at me and says i'm but the question is are you stupid has the word of god ever told you you are stupid those who mentor and lead you have they ever told you you are stupid so someone who has no investment whatsoever in your life wants to come and stake claim a stake in your mind and you give them permission you give them entrance into your mind before I listen to you, I must see the contribution you have made to my destiny. You don't come as a stranger and want the seat of somebody who has made meaningful investments. Is someone learning now? So you must know how to edit opinions and throw rubbish to the, to the bin and keep moving. Someone looks at you and says, you look like you are not a powerful Christian. From you, I, I suspect that as a this lady, you will most likely not be a great lady. Congratulations for your ignorance. Watch as you learn and ask God for forgiveness for the remaining part of your life. Because as for me, I'm evolving. Because like our people sang, the word of God is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. God has placed models before me and a determination to succeed. No, there is no power in existence that sustains what it takes to keep you down. Are we together? I don't have the time to tell you everything the Bible says you are, but I will keep reminding you, my dear people, among the many things the Bible says about you is that you are light, you are salt. Say, I am light. I am light. Let the devil hear it. I am Say, I am, salt. I am salt. Yes, it says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. Yes, sir. It says you are the apple of his eyes. If God is that vulnerable about you, don't let some guy who has not made any meaning to your life, he's still figuring his left from his right, just comes and uses his ignorance to define you. And you go back crying and begin to live a life that is outside the script of your destiny. Our world has gained mastery in bullying people psychologically. Oh, look at this lady, she's not fine. Look at this guy, his head is too big. What kind of human being is this? Many of our children today are joining occults and joining all kinds of satanic things thanks to those kinds of negative statements. So when you tell a lady she's not beautiful, enough. When you tell a guy he's broke, he doesn't have money, enough. You put pressure on them to start doing a lot of things. But in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you now, everything satan has been whispering to your ears that did not come from scripture we decree and declare may those sounds cease in your life Amen. is someone learning sinatch taught us powerfully i live a life of favor i know why there's a part of the song i like take a look at me i'm a wonder listen you've been singing it to yes listen this is how you people don't learn. You have been crying with that song in your head. Now allow me to teach you what the song means. <laughs> you hear what that song says? It says, take a look at me and I wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Sounds to me like scripture. Mm. It doesn't matter what you see. Don't let the 20 naira trousers deceive you. The person inside is a company that is rising. 
don't be deceived that after the grace while others are hopping into their cars god bless them and you are walking after such a powerful message and you are asking so what did i fall down for you are joking you don't know what entered your spirit the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear if you had seen some of us 15 20 years ago and they told you this version of us exists in that version you will not believe it do you know the other versions that are still in you you have seen the weak one thank god you have seen the weak one once and for all so that every other thing you see is the strong one evolving yes sir do you believe what you are hearing man of god i know you've not started ministry but it doesn't mean the call is not there you think we're always celebrated no i taught my dear people in zaria you work out your own salvation it does not start with doing it starts with believing something about yourself hallelujah when people hang themselves what do you think leads them to go and get a rope you know how painful it is to hang yourself and watch yourself die yet there are people who prefer that because life has told them something I was told a story, I think it's just a, maybe some fiction to illustrate a point. That somebody was angry with life and he was wearing some clothes that were not really nice and he was on his way to go and hang himself. And there was a beggar who was watching him. When he saw him tying the rope, he said, please sir, since you are going to die, why don't you remove what you have and just give me? Because at least if you die, you'll be naked. And the man turned and said, so what I'm wearing that I think is a shame is somebody's prayer request. Do you know how many people are secretly praying to be you? They have seen something in you you have not seen. Your focus is just beauty. Whereas they've seen virtue and they are praying. They've seen character and they are praying. Is someone learning? You are just looking at, uh, for want of what, six pack or whatever number you are, you are looking for. Whereas someone is seeing a loyal, a trusted person. If you are hearing, say amen. amen. God used Dr. Munro to train some of us to understand that the world will only celebrate what you celebrate. If you hate yourself and you do not celebrate yourself, it is fraud to ask people to celebrate someone you hate yourself. Somebody after this service, you need to go back and say, Lord, you've done me well. Oh. Thank God for the gift of me. Are we together? That there's somebody today with all due respect, with no arms and no feet, and yet he's still confident about his life. Have you seen people like that? God left them, I believe, to be inspirations to us. You have your hand, you have your feet, you have everything complete, and you are still saying you are not good enough. No. Who am I? You need to answer that question now. And you do not identify yourself with things. If you say, I am a millionaire, uh, that is not bad, but that is not an intelligent answer. A millionaire means one who has millions. No. There is a more superior understanding that produces such a person. What happens to you if all the millions leave? What happens to you if all the fame and everything leaves? Most people have defined themselves with the things around them. So you live a life that looks like a failure and a miserable person. Suddenly you get a job with some oil and gas firm and you square up immediately. Hallelujah. Sitting in front here does not change me. Truly, I, I tell you, believe me when I tell you this. If I sit at the back, I'm still Joshua Selman, full of everything God gave me. And if you doubt it, you will give me time to prove it. Are we together now? Many people because of identity crisis today have gathered all kinds of enemies. I came to the occasion and they called me Joshua Selman, not Apostle Joshua Selman. Okay, they made a mistake. Sorry, it's all right. No, I won't forgive them. I went for a wedding and they started serving the other people before me. Okay, sorry, it was a, a mistake. No, that means you are saying they are higher than me. Who told you? Are we together? You were introducing people and you introduced brother A before brother B. So you are trying to say brother A is more important. Are you seeing how failure keeps suggesting things that is not even in the minds of people? I have taught you this. Someone can be looking at you like this. And you say this, this look looks like hatred. And the person is thinking about his rent. Not you. The person is just looking at you but honestly under God. What he's thinking about is how to beg his landlord.
my dear people hear me this is not a call to being pompous being loud without reason but it's a call to a settled sense of confidence no matter what you say about me provided you are not god and you are not anyone in front of me that i respect you only wasted your energy and your sound do you have that kind of courage because there are many times as you'll be learning you will have to walk alone are we together now i believe everything god says he has made me my sufficiency is not of myself but of christ who has made me an abled minister many years ago i used to share this humorously um those days when we started and i started traveling i didn't used to wear all these kinds of things i would just wear a polo and a jean and my palm just flying and you see the people waiting at the airport for the great man of god whose message they have listened to largely audio so most of them have not seen me usually a few people will recommend to the church you need to bring this man of god then i come down from the plane and they are looking at me they are wondering is it my protocol is it this and when they see me you can see the shock and the disappointment i mean this is what we've been waiting for and then I greet them sometimes and they're like, okay, that's the car, please enter and let's go. <laughs> ah, it's not my fault. God put the grace in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then usually after the meeting, they are now saying, sir, when again are you going to be, um, um, when will you be free? It's such a privilege. And I'm saying, look at the same people. Let me tell you the truth. When you know who you are, you don't need to waste time telling people who you are if you find yourself always trying to say who you are it is a mechanism to manage your not knowing who you are does a lion tell you it's a lion lions roar and it stops there an eagle does not need to tell you i'm an eagle keep watching the sky sooner or later you will see that there is only one bird that is soaring with such level of mastery that bird is not called a pigeon it's called an eagle are we together the pressure to try to prove a point is something that must die permanently. If anybody thinks you are a failure, forgive their ignorance while they learn. And if they insist that you are a failure, leave them with God, the one who called you to make you successful. If a gentleman looks at you and says you are not fine enough, thank God because you would have married the wrong person. Let him carry his trouble and go. Are we together now? Did you hear what I'm saying? And if some lady tells you that she wants somebody with all the money in the world, bless God for her. And thank God for the one who will see you while you are rising. So that you will not have any fear when you rise. Identity crisis. My dear people, hear me. There is more within you than you will ever imagine. There is more within you. Yes, you can be a work in progress. Don't let your limitations define you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. It does not mean to embrace everything including what is destroying your life that's not what i'm advocating some of you have very bad manners with all due respect some of you are not people of character some of you are not visionary people i'm not saying embrace that part of you but have it that there is potential within your spirit the bible says we are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of god hallelujah i heard god's servant bishop david Oedipo say that there's nowhere he will go in the world that the lord gave him something he calls a far above mentality that there is nowhere he will go in the world that he will allow himself to be intimidated and he's proved it with his life now there is a false sense of confidence where you abuse and insult people they say lift your hand you say no i'm fearfully and wonderfully no you are rude and ill-trained that is not how fearfully and wonderfully made people behave this is not my advocacy are you are you getting me now yes or you sound very sarcastic you laugh at people you fight people and say i'm like that no that's an attack come next week so that your problem is solved once and for all but i'm teaching someone here who before the alert comes to your account you are still confident you are in one room and you don't hide where you are staying you don't follow through a three bedroom and turn around and go to your one bedroom because you are trying to show that you are what is there to be afraid of are we together you are not the first to stay in one room you are not the first to have one cooking pot stay there with honor and snap it while you are there because it will become a monument tomorrow that one room is not your house that one room is a retreat center pray there no god there fast there build there read books there and emerge 
when you become bigger than that room that room will run away from you it's true there is a level you get to in the spirit where it becomes unfair to remain there that room will run away even if you don't leave it it will leave you who am I I'm showing you the kind of training that constructed our understanding so that today by the privilege of God's grace things and people and achievements is not what defines some of us by the grace of God thank God for the crowns the accolades and everything but my identity as the son of God supersedes my identity as any other thing I know that I'm the son of God I'm a child of God loved by him jealously loved by him koinonia or otherwise if you have this mentality believe me there are many things you will not cry about again there are many things you will not have to discuss about again you will save yourself wasteful um, times in prayer and invest in constructive prayer Lord look at what people are saying about me <laughs> no hallelujah some gentleman who just came here now you may not look like it but my goodness God is doing something in you hallelujah so we live fake lives trying to buy a designer watch I'm not saying anything is wrong with that designer this designer that and claiming all kinds of things running into debt getting into trouble aligning with wrong people who bring wrong values to destroy us and many of us cannot be alone one of the ways that you have truly gained security is the power to be alone and yet no you are not alone though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil what's the revelation for thou art with me who am i this is what we teach and train the students in the school of ministry among the many things listen my life changed i don't know how insecure maybe how i don't know what kind of life i would have been living today and with all due respect i have watched people and i continue to watch with shock and sympathy genuine sympathy i have seen the danger of identity crisis when it comes upon a leader when it comes upon an individual it will make you do things you will hate but you will still keep doing it because you are trying to gain the applause of men first John chapter 3 and verse 1 we need to hurry up I sense that God is speaking to someone I sense that God brought someone to church tonight to tell the person the way you are going you will not make it that way the pressure to prove a point you borrow cars you borrow clothes you borrow everything are we together you want to that that obsession for visibility no God gives visibility but not by manipulation when you merit it by growth it comes naturally i taught you here in koinonia two years or so ago that success is not what you pursue success is what you attract by who you become if you steal tomorrow's bread today you will be hungry tomorrow you are stealing from tomorrow's kitchen to eat it today if all i have is jesus I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than gold. Sing it one more time. That if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to the world. Let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. The journey from where most people are until they become is quite long. It will take time. And for the most part of that journey, you'll be walking alone. You will walk alone in the midst of noises that you will be hearing. You will not make it. You can't go far. I taught them in Zaria again. If you had looked at Joseph, the one in the pit, not the one in the palace. You would look at him and there would be nothing that looked like prophecy upon him. But he had the self-security to continue. 
such that even when he was in the prison he knew he was not in a, a prisoner he was just in a prison it's one thing to be in a prison but it's another thing to identify yourself as a prisoner if you are call yourself a prisoner even if you are in a palace you are still a prisoner hallelujah i can be in a condition that does not exactly reflect prosperity but in my mind that can be rich unto god and rich unto a sound mind I will not fake my life but right where i am i know in my mind that the nations this is an orientation that we had you may be in the prison but never call yourself a prisoner if you call yourself a prisoner even if the door is open you are still in prison who am i 